A good morning to everyone. We are live from Digital Address GA0992539 in Kokomemi Accra. On DSTV, we are on channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. Welcome to Joy News Interactive. You can follow us, like our page on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We are Joy News on TV. My name is Selina Ampo. Now, many pedestrians still cross the dangerous Adenta Medina Highway despite violent protests eight months ago, which led to the construction of some footbridges along that stretch. Well, yesterday we brought you that report. We will bring that report back because today there's a twist. Let's take a look. The anger of a people triggered by a pedestrian knockdown on a highway notorious for road accidents. The November 2018 violence demonstration will forever be remembered by many as the protesters blocked the road, burned tires and clashed with police as they showed anger at the unavailability of footbridges and other crossing aids. Many had been knocked down, some of them being killed, but the death of a WASP student was one too many for the residents. I was knocked down some time ago. They should fix the bridges for us. My brother was knocked down at the same filling station. Look at this thing. When was this started? Until now. Nothing is being done about it. It was a collective reminder to a nation and a people determined to change a negative narrative that never again should anyone be killed by a speeding vehicle on the stretch. Six of the abandoned footbridges will be awarded to contractors to complete work and fix ancillary parts for pedestrian use. Today, four of the six footbridges have been completed and open for pedestrian use. But Joy News has witnessed a distressing spectacle of people still crossing the road dangerously from one end to another. It's been more than 20 minutes of observing the flow of traffic on this particular stretch of the Medina Adentan Highway. But it is surprising to know that I've counted as many as 15 individuals who have abandoned the footbridge and have dangerously crossed over from one side to the other side with traffic flowing on this particular stretch. And this is what has been happening here since this particular bridge was opened. From what commuters here tell me, they say the residents complain that the distance they have to cover from one side of the road to the other side it's too long when they use the footbridge. Kennedy and Ben are taxi drivers right in front of a taught to teen school at Adenta. They tell me why some of the pedestrians have abandoned the footbridge. The pedestrians say the bridges are too long. It takes them longer to cross the road. The police from here, you might point with you, and so they want to be cross. But the police from over there, they are there, want to be ever on. Well, we hope these acts of indiscipline would not continue because this morning the police has taxed themselves to pick up anyone who's seen crossing the highway without using the footbridges. Many of you have been applauding it and here are some comments. And Akbar says they should be given community service for one month. And Abdul Rahman says they should be made to clean the gutters around. And Aduku Dani says he supports it. And Frank Ajaku says that's the way to go. Richie Sun says good idea. They must be fined 100 Ghana for three months in prison. And Finito and Anakwami says good move by the police. Edu Anas Anansi says it's a good thing if they can't protect their own lives, government will protect it for them. And Fuseini Abu says charge them for attempted suicide because they know it is dangerous to cross the road and yet they jaywalk. Dada Densu says perfect and whoever refuses to use um, use it should join the prisoners to weed and sweep the public road side the public road side thank you mm -hmm. 
Now let's move away from that and talk about Avoke. I'm sure the name Prof. Mauto Avoke is not new to you. You remember when he was asked to step aside as Vice Chancellor for the University of Education, Winneba. Well, okay, the man himself stormed the university wanting to reinstate himself, explaining that he has been cleared by Yoko. Listen. As you are all probably aware, the anti graph agency Yoko followed a sustained probe into a number of allegations level against six officers of the university, including me, by the Professor Abekale Governing Council of the University of Education, concluded in black and white that we did not abuse our offices, nor were we in violation of any procurement process. This allegation formed the basis on which we were removed from office. It's also interesting to know that these dismissals were made despite the pendency of the case of the Supreme Court of the land at the time. We are back to our offices today to resume our rightful positions, knowing that there is no court prohibition on us and no notice of indictment from Yoko. We are delighted that the government institution, Yoko, has been professional and did a thorough independent investigation. This is clear evidence of a state institution working to ensure justice and fairness to its citizens. Way forward. During our press conference on the 16th April 2019, we argued for unity and harmony in the University of Education, Wiliba, as an important basis for growth and ensure a conducive environment for scholarship. Well, some of you have been reacting to this as well. Let's take some social media comments. And Che Derek Bruce, Bru, sorry, says something must be done as early as possible. And Matthias says interesting times ahead. And Yambo Agnes says fire on the mountain. Is there? Hmm. Benjamin Kojo Dick, um, Dake or Dick, <laughs> says, very laudable in the interest of natural justice. The basis of his removal was declared null and void by a recognized state investigative body. Why has he not been reinstated? Wisdom says um, he could be lawfully or unlawfully removed, but he is well qualified for other opportunities, even the current v, um, vice chancellorship, and he could be unattractive. Well, now um, we've heard what he had to say. We'll see if he becomes vice chancellor soon. We hope so. Anyways, let's move away from that and talk about something most of us um, feel and we wish didn't ever happen. Let's talk about the man at Terminals. He was a man described often um, as a humble man, patient, and a passionate politician, and in him the name Asum Drehene. Today, Ghana remembers a great man, a ceremony which is supposed to be, or expected to be held today in Accra to mark the seventh anniversary of the demise of former President John Evans at Mills. Well, we will take a break and then we'll bring you some comments after that. Before we go and do tech talk or any other thing we have to bring you wise words on wednesday so let's do our wednesday wisdom and peche africa says hashtag wednesday wisdom there's no growth in comfort zones it's where your dreams go to die and unfortunately this is where most of us most of society lives um, hashtag dj sbg and lawrence Sharon says, whether you think you are ready or not, just start right now. There's magic in action. Hashtag Wednesday Wisdom. And Deacon Jackson says, I don't regret the things I've done. I regret the things I didn't do when I had the chance. Hashtag Wednesday Wisdom. And 
Nema says we cannot be sure of having something to live for unless we are willing to die for it. Hashtag Wednesday Wisdom. And Dan Tef says don't envy what people have. Emulate what they did to have it. This is a quote from Tim Fago and comes with that image right there. Hashtag Wednesday Wisdom. And Dr. Caleb says life, you never know when it starts or ends until it does. Ego ego enjoy it until the party is over hashtag wednesday wisdom hashtag wednesday thoughts and Fahad says no great genius has ever existed without a touch of madness a quote from aristotle um, hashtag wednesday wisdom hashtag quote of the day michael na says in the long run we only hit what we aim at a quote from henry david thoreau um, hashtag wednesday wisdom and Le Pantsula says, inhale courage, exhale fear. Hashtag Wednesday Wisdom. And Sayyid Ahmed says, to put the world right in order, we must first put the nation in order. To put the nation in order, we must first put the family in order. To put the family in order, we must first cultivate our personal life. We must first set our hearts right. Hashtag Wednesday Wisdom. We'll take a quick break and we will be back. Welcome back from that short break. And I promised you that we're going to bring you some comments on Ghana remembering the late John Evans Atamil. So let's hop on social media to read those comments. And this is from Peter Kwekulumo. He says, our dear professor continue to sleep, sleep, sleep in the bosom of Father Abraham with the heavenly angels singing for you. The working people of the University of Ghana remembers your days as the chairman of the Standing Joint Negotiations Committee. And this is a tweet from John Dramani Mahama. He says, seven years ago today, our nation was struck with unquenchable grief and agony when President John Atta Mills departed to his maker. He was a man who stood for the highest ideals of leadership and for the greatest aspirations of our democracy. Rest in peace, Prof. And Tuntak Human says, today, 24 July 2019, marks exactly seven years when Ghana was thrown into total shock and darkness following the sudden demise of the sitting president of Ghana, Prof. John Evans Atamils. This, is, this, is, this was his known public speech. I guess he post, posted a speech attached to that. And Obed Kwao says, today Ghana remembers ex-president John Atamil. Seven years on, you will forever be in our hearts. A man who fears God and eschews evil till we meet again, Mr. President. And Beneza says, today marks seven years without the late press John Evans Fifi Atamil. Ghana lost this great man on July 24th. 2012 at 37 military hospital Accra at Sumdrehene Prof Atta Mills. You will never be forgotten, especially your popular saying, my brothers and sisters, Prof Dayer. Mm -hmm. 